Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So coordination in human beings. In human beings, coordination takes place, is taken care by two different systems. That is the endocrine system, which takes care of all the slower body processes because here the transmission is comparatively slower. For example, the cell growth. So where it will not happen just overnight, but it will take its own sweet time. So in human beings, the growth is controlled and it happens at specific places and that too in a specific pattern. That is why you would have seen that the way your fingers grow is quite different than the way your face grows. So the growth in different parts of your body is quite different. So these kind of slower processes are taken care by the endocrine system, whereas the faster processes are taken care by the nervous system where the transmission is very fast. So several movements, for example, the heartbeat or the, the scenario where you start jumping when you get an electric shock or when you start running when you see a tiger. So all such scenarios are faster uh, transmission scenarios where you react to a situation very fast. So their nervous system plays a role. Now in this lesson, we will keep our focus only on the nervous system. We will keep endocrine system for the next lesson. Right? Okay. So let us talk about the nervous system. So as I said, it coordinates the functions of various organs and organ system of the body. Now when I say various organs, you can think of the example when you get an electric shock, you jump off the chair. The person actually jumps off the chair. So when he tries to jump off the chair, there has to be a coordination between the various organs, between his legs, his hands, his body movements. So each and every organ of the body should be in sync. It also coordinates the organ systems. When I say organ systems, that means the digestive system, the circulatory system, the excretory system, they are all synchronized with each other with the help of the nervous system. So the nervous system is like the boss who controls the functioning of all the other organ systems of the body. So nervous system actually tells when the digestive system has to function, when the respiratory system has to do its job and how they both need to be linked with each other. So it is like the mastermind behind whatever is happening inside our body. So it works along with the hormonal or chemical control. When I say hormonal or chemical control, I am actually talking about the endocrine system. Now, the, both these systems, nervous system will take care of the faster processes, endocrine will take care of the slower processes. But both are working together, putting their hands together to perform the activity of control and coordination inside our body. So endocrine system will take care of processes like growth, handling emotions, their reproductive processes, whereas the nervous system will take care of the movements, the instant responses to situations, so all the faster processes. So they both work together. So again, in this case, what which system will be in function? It will be the nervous system. Again, in this case, it will be the nervous system. Here, when you actually put your leg on the fire and immediately push, pull it off, again, your nervous system. What happens when your mouth starts watering? So their hormones play a role as well. So your eyes see the burger, which appears delicious to you. But there are some chemicals which actually tells that your mouth should start watering. So it is like a hormone also plays its role. That is the chemicals also play its role. But nervous system also does it its job. So these are some of the examples. So where you can see that nervous system plays its role. Now, before we go ahead to understand the structure and function of the nervous system in different living, in different animals, we need to be aware of some of the terms which are very commonly used with regards to the nervous system. So, the first term is stimulus. So, what is a stimulus? The plural is stimuli. So, it is an event which gives rise to a specific reaction in an organ or tissue. So, basically, it is something which initiates it, which pricks off the response. For example, if you touch a hot mug of coffee, what happens? That hot mug of coffee is actually providing the stimulus. So as soon as you touch it, you react. And what is the reaction? You take your hand off. Similarly, when you see a burger, 
So looking at the burger, your mouth starts to water. So what is the response? Your response on seeing the burger is the watering of your mouth. So what is the stimulus here? The burger is providing you the stimulus. So seeing the burger is the event. Looking at the burger is the event which is giving rise to a specific reaction that is watering of your mouth. So that means looking at the burger is the stimulus. So anything that initiates a, a specific reaction in a particular organ or a particular tissue inside your body is known as stimulus. Similarly, when you touch the fire, you feel the hot and then you react, you jump back. So that means touching the fire provides the stimulus. Next is response. So whatever you react in response to a stimulus is known as response. So the reaction due to a stimulus. So in both these examples, watering of your mouth is the response. In the second case, taking your leg back is the response because that is how you are reacting due to the stimulus. Next is the receptors. Receptors, somebody who receives anything. So here receptors are nothing but the sensory organs. That is those organs of our body which receive the stimulus, which actually tells whatever changes are there, which can cause a specific reaction. For example, let us suppose that the burger is lying there, but if you keep your eyes closed, Will you be able to uh, react to the stimulus? No, right? Because you have not seen the burger. Only when you see the burger, your mouth starts to water. So basically, your eyes act as the receptor. That is, your eyes receive the information. Your eyes receive the stimulus. So these are those organs by which stimuli from outside or inside the body are received. So they actually receive the stimulus. Similarly here in this case, your leg was the receptor. So the skin basically is the receptor. Now if your skin would have not been there, you would have not experienced the heat. Right? So in that case, you would have not pulled your leg back if you, your leg was not there on the fire. So there are several receptors in human beings, for example, uh, eyes are the photoreceptors, that is they receive light, ears are the phonoreceptors. So these eyes, as I said, they are the photoreceptors, that is they receive light, they help us to see different objects. Ears, they are the phonoreceptors, that is they receive sound, they help us to hear so many different noise. For example, if you hear the roar of a tiger, even if you don't see the tiger, even if you hear the roar of a tiger, you start running away from that place. Because as soon as your ear receives that sound, it sends that information to the brain and then the brain interprets and understands that okay, this sound is the sound of the tiger. So you should run away and then you start running away. Right? Similarly, there are, you also have other sensory organs, for example, nose. So nose acts as an olfactor receptor, that means it receives smell. So you can actually distinguish between different objects by its smell. Your skin also acts as a receptor and it is a thermoreceptor or a tango receptor, whatever you call it. That is, it helps to receive the temperature. Now, for example, here in this case, the skin of your leg, when it was put to fire, it could sense the temperature and it could feel that it is extremely hot and that is why it took it back. So they are the receptors, that is those organs which receive the stimulus. And then the last one, that is the effector organs. Now, what are they? These were the receptor organs. Now, we will talk about the effector organs. What is this effector organs? The organs that produce an effect in response to the stimuli. Okay, stimulus is something which will make you to react. Whatever you react, that is response. Now, the organs which help you to receive the stimulus, that is receptor. And the organs which help you to give the response, they are effector because they produce the effect. That is why the name effector. So, in this case, for example, when you pull your leg back, which organs help you to produce the response? What was the response? Pulling your leg back. back. So, the muscle cells of your leg actually helped you to give that response. So they are the effector organs. So here for example the muscles movement in this case. Similarly here the production of saliva actually helped you to give the response. So they are your effector organs. So those organs which help you to, to give that response, to give a particular response, they are known as the effector organs. Now the 
Now, these terms will be there when we talk about the nervous system. So, everywhere we will be talking about stimulus, response, uh, receptor organs and effector organs. But in different animals, the means of carrying the information is going to be different. So when we talk about a human being and when we talk about an insect, the means of carrying the information from one part of the body to another will be different. Also, the means of recognizing the external stimulus will also be different because the sense organs are also different in different organisms. Like human beings have eyes, ears, nose, skin, etc. But not all organisms do have that. If you look at the lower animals, for example, the flatworms or the uh, sponges, they do not have such distinct sensory organs. So the way they receive stimulus, that is also going to be different. So now here we have listed down some of the receptors. As I said, different animals have different means to receive the external information. So receptors are nothing but the sensory organs. So photoreceptors are those receptors which receive light. Phonoreceptors are those which receive sound. Olfactor receptors are those which receive smell. Thermoreceptors receive temperature. So these are the names given to the different types of sensory organs in human beings. It is done by eyes, this is done by the ear, this is done by nose, this is done by skin. Now, but in different animals, again, you will have different parts of their body of acting as photoreceptor or phonoreceptor or any of these. Tango receptors for touch. So this is also served by the skin. So when somebody touches you, you can feel the difference. So that is also received by your skin. So skin acts as a tango receptor. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.